Hello, everybody. Welcome back to... What? To uncovering bits of the map. Oh, hi. Okay. Yeah, might as well talk to them, I guess. Hi, guys. The civilians blink up at you, their faces ashen. The man still hugs his stolen loaf of bread. In his terror, he's crushed it into an hourglass shape. We're alive. Oh, thank God we're still alive. We've seen the police do brutal things here before, but nothing like this. They were gonna kill us. Kill us! Over three millions worth of bread! Uh, well, the cops are locking this entire area down. You need to get out of here and off the street. You don't have to tell us twice. Come on, love. Let's find a place to hide until this blows over. Yeah, that's right. Get out of here. Get out of here! You don't want to end up dying like those cops did. Right? <laughs> the police comment crackled to life again. Crate. All teams, ready your weapons and prepare for my mark. Do not, I repeat, do not move before you are instructed to. Anyone who fails to obey this command will answer to me. Await my instructions. Crate out. Great. Great crate. Uh, what's going on here, guys? Hi. A group of middle-aged people in shabby clothing were gathered in the street, huddled together and clutching their possessions. They were wide-eyed, staring some obviously in shock. The reds had taken their toll. A man with a patchy beard, the leader of the group by the looks of things, leaned forward, his eyes shifting from one member of the congregation to the next. His voice was low and urgent, his tone serious. Look, we can't stay here. Let's gather whatever we can, go to the barricades at the edge of town, and show the cops our IDs. Once we can prove we live here and that we're unarmed, they'll let us through. That's the plan. Uh. Uh. Yeah, good plan. Go talk to the cops. See what happens. Um. Go toward Hyoi. Hyoi? This is owned by criminals. We look like a bunch of killers to you. No, oh, man. We need to go to the Central District or Victoria Harbor, maybe. Someplace corp controlled. There are no riots there. No dangerous people. We'll be safe. Uh. You think the cops at the barricades will let you through to the rich part of the island? It's worth a shot. Better than hanging around here and waiting to get robbed or shot or killed. Or, well, kicked to death. Uh, okay. I don't like the HKPF any more than anybody else, but I'll take my chances with them over the rioters any day. Uh, you're gonna regret it. They're cops. I like our odds better with them than I do with the people out here on the streets. He turned his head towards the others. If you need anything from your homes, clothes, heirlooms, valuables, go get them. Be quick about it. We'll meet back here in ten minutes, and then we're headed for the barricade. We're getting out of this death trap. You guys are gonna... Okay. You're gonna regret that! Stuck guy and well for you guys, but don't say I didn't try to warn you. Hi. A lanky man in a skin-tight vest leered at you as you entered the bar. He looked like a low-level go-ganger, dressed in a black sun boy's colors. He stepped out in front of you to block your progress. Bar's closed. Orders the boss. He pointed at the door you walked in through. Step on out of here, now. Uh, you have no idea who you're talking to, do you? He shook his head, defiance in his eyes. No, I don't. I don't care. In here, you're nothing unless combat pang says different. His hand lowered to the knife of his belt. I'm gonna give you a choice. Get moving or start bleeding. Hmm. <laughs> I have fought a de demigod and won. You are a punk with a knife. Tell me again who has the death wish. <laughs> um, hmm. The drone or the demigod? I feel like that's... He would probably just take that as, like, hollow bragging. So, uh... The brigger's lips parted into a thin smile. None at all, my friend. Rockter's murderous drone scuttled forward with forward with alarming speed, its chassis all hard edges and gleaming metal. It reared back, splaying its killing legs wide. Rockter's smile widened. None at all. Ganger's eyes went comically wide, and the bravado he'd been displaying a moment ago evaporated. He started backing away, his hands raised in surrender, his lip trembling. Uh, hey, I don't wanna... He looked over his shoulder toward the bar. Boss! A low voice growled out from behind the bar. Beside the bar. Fuck me sideways, Jimmy. Have I gotta do everything myself around here? What do I even keep you around for? Eddie Combat Pang, the owner of the Combat Pangs and the ringleader of half a dozen Kowloon City go gangs, Black Sun Boys included. He leered at you through a mouthful of gold capped teeth. 
Pang was a living stereotype, the surly dwarf in the flesh. Ten tons of Napoleon complex in a 70 kilo body. Alright, you won't listen my boy, maybe you'll listen to me. We are closed. If you want to keep all your fucking teeth, you'll turn around and go the way go the way you came. <laughs> no, no way, man. You reopen that kitchen, you do it now. We're here for the wings, and, um... Because fuck you, that's why. Great. Uh... And, and breasts and thighs. Great, yes, let's... <laughs> Uh, we'll go with it. Okay, we'll, we'll go with it. We also want the artifact you stole. You heard that woman, Pang. We want chicken parts and an ancient rock, and we want them now. With extra sauce and a bucket of lobster rolls and a whole fistful of napkins. Wet wipes, too, if you have them. He wrapped his fingers against the bar. An innocuous gesture, but it sent, set alarm bells ringing in your head. All around you, gangers began shifting their positions, their smiles growing ugly, hands creeping toward holsters. From somewhere in the back of the room, you heard an ominous sound. Heavy footsteps and the scrape of something metal against the floorboards. Are we gonna kill a butcher? Kitchen's closed, sweetheart. Unless you want to man the oven yourself, chicken's off the table. But if you come back for happy hour sometime, I'd be happy to hook you up. He shifts, he shifts his gaze to you. Now if you want the rock, I've gotta assume you're on Cheng's payroll. Is that true? Uh... You... Yeah, that's right. Afraid you're mistaken on that front. Everything in this bar is mine, Buttercup. Mine. You're standing in my home right now. See all these people around you? They're my friends. And they don't take kindly to strangers who come in here trying to throw their weight around. Uh... If you don't bring the rock back to Chang, you're gonna have a war on your hands. Think you could take on the Yellow Lotus? The old lady wanted a war. She'd have sent her soldiers, not a hired hand. He smiled at you, his gold-capped teeth glinting in the light. Can't help but notice she didn't do that. Are you sure? Are you are you positive about that? More shifting from the assembled gangers in the bar. Some of them looked angry, ready to start shooting and cutting, but others were clearly concerned. Kindly Cheng's name carried a lot of weight in Kowloon City, and everybody knew the Yellow Lotus. The shift wasn't difficult for you to see. Pang could see it, too. Tell you what. I'm in a generous mood tonight, and I don't really need the rock for anything. Sounds like Cheng's got you in a bind, and you're gonna be in trouble with her if you don't bring it back tonight, so I'll sell it to you. Give me, say, 500 new yen, and I'll have my boys box it up. Uh... I've got a better idea. I mean, we do have... we have the cash. And what else are we gonna use it for at the moment? But, we have the charisma, as well. Like, this is how we spec our character. So, <laughs> you give me the rock, and I'll try extra hard to convince Kindly not to burn your bar to the ground. I can't let you take it for free. I'd set a bad example for the boys. It's mine. You gotta give me something for it. Um... My help in keeping the Yellow Lotus from murdering your entire family. That goes for everyone in the room, by the way. Let's see. Uh, the corners of his mouth drew down into an ugly scowl. He took another moment to size you up, his eyes darting from you to each member of your team. Then he glanced back at the gangers. They were jumpy, nervous. His slab-like hands curled into fists. It's in a cubbyhole behind the bar. Go on, take the thing, get out. More trouble than it was worth, anyway. Great. Great. That was... There we go. Seems like an awful waste, all of this trouble over a stupid hunk of rock. It's Chang's rock. It's all we have to know. Uh... Better get moving. Something metallic hit the ground at your feet. Cutting you short. A canister of some kind. He didn't hear where it came from. Behind us. Oh. By the time you could process what was happening, it was too late. The metal tube erupted, spraying out a hissing steam stream of concentrated vapor. In the distance, you could see a group of figures wearing gas masks. Not riot control cops, and not SDU, but official looking wearing red uniforms. They were already moving in, beelining in your direction. Um... Well, we already know how this is going to end up. 
So, uh, hold your breath. You sealed your lips shut, but the vapor crawled up your nostrils anyway. It was sharp with the chemical tang that you could taste in the back of your throat. It made your eyes burn and filled your mouth with saliva. You stumbled forward, struggling to right yourself. It was a lost cause. The world went black. Yep, there we go. And now we're brought to present. Your words ring metallically off the confinement room's walls. You've been talking for so long, recounting all the tedious details of your run, that your voice hums in your ears after you've finished speaking. The single flickering bulb above your head sways in an invisible breeze. Beyond the light's reach, your interrogator stands shrouded in shadow. You can't see his eyes, but you can feel them quietly observing you from the safety of his corner. His silence opens the floodgate to your f thoughts, and the questions come pouring in. Were you brought here alone? With others, most of all, what do your captors want from you? You finish your story. There's nothing left to tell. It's his turn. To talk. Oh, quite. And what is he going to be saying? We've corroborated our story now. I'm sure this probably... I don't know why we're doing this. Are you guys actually, like, police? Are you guys, like, official? Or are you mercenaries? Is this going to be some sort of a, a private military contractor sort of thing? The troll lifts his audio recorder from the table and clicks it off. He stands in silence for a moment, looming over you, sizing you up. And then he purses his lips and nods. And that's when we picked you up. Uh. What do you think? You know, as a rule, I don't like smart asses, but you make a fair point. Alright, thank you for reca recapping all of that for me, Miss Moore. Your testimony was extremely helpful. And I don't mention it. Now you've helped us. It's only fair you learn something in return. He casts you a sidelong glance. We recovered this at the scene. Take a look and see what we saved you and your team from. He sets the PDA down on the desk, activates it with the tip of his pen, and slides it toward you. Just watch. Don't touch. You don't want your fingerprints on this thing. Uh... The feed is shaky. Whoever owned this device must have been panicked out of breath. You can see people, swarms of people, including the locals that you spoke to on the street. All are carrying burdens of some kind or another, a laptop here, a knapsack there. Backpacks bul bulging with shrink-wrapped food and bottled water. None of the locals appear to be armed. Camera wheels around and you can see a firing line of police. The man with the patchy beard is pleading with them, begging to be let through. He says that he isn't a rioter, that none of the people here are. The constable, faceless behind his mask, says nothing. The camera focuses in on figure behind police lines. Her features are instantly familiar. Chief Inspector Crate. She looks straight into the camera, then she reaches her hand to an ear and speaks into her comm link. Her voice is loud and clear enough that you can hear it over the PDA's tinny speakers. All teams, you know your orders. Open fire. Put them down. An explosion of gunfire fills your ears. The camera spins crazily and you catch a panoramic view of bodies bursting like water balloons. Faces you recognize from your trip to combat Pang scream for help and are silenced. The second volley of gunfire catches the owner of the PDA. You hear him shriek, watch the camera spin dizzyingly. You hear a sickening crack and the video feed flickers and dies. Much like the person holding it. <laughs> the PDA goes silent. Without a word, your interrogator lifts it from the table and returns it to its evidence bag. Uh... That's... Well, then. Um... Never thought I'd be this happy to get drugged and kidnapped. You should be. If we hadn't brought you in, you'd have been gunned down with the rest of the poor bastards you saw in that video feed. No questions. No rests. Just a hail of bullets that would have converted you and your team from Shadowrunners into statistics. I've seen more... measured police responses. He nods slowly. Officially, the special duties unit suppressed the riot just like they were supposed to. That's the story all the news outlets are running with. Unofficially. Well, you be the judge. Um. So, you must need me for something. Solid reasoning. Let's just say that people at the top have had their eyes on you for a while now. You'll get all the answers you need soon enough. Troll stretches, slips his pen back into his breast pocket, and flips his notepad shut. Then he taps a series of keystrokes into his PDA, and the cuffs around your wrists go slack. Lights in the room come up, and for the first time you can see his face, and the badge on his hip. HKPF, standard issue, a laminated card clipped to his breast pocket states his name, Inspector David Yang. 
Well then. Okay, I think we're done here. Uh, what are you charging me with? Nothing. You aren't under arrest. You and your team are here as guests of the HKPF, and you're going to remain that way until we tell you differently. Uh, guests? Not my job. You'll have to speak with Q and Lamb for that. Don't worry, they'll be sending for you soon enough. Uh, who are they? You'll find out. Great. That's what we want. Let's get up. Also, why is the okay? So there's a door here. Bam! Door looks solid. You can't see any visible doorknob or lacking, latching mechanism from where you're standing. Most likely, it's barred from the other side. Um. Wait patiently. You step away from the door and wait. Minutes pass. Nothing happens. Examine the door more closely. The door is made of heavy steel. It appears to be mounted to a set of tracks at the top and bottom of the door frame, designed to slide rather than to swing open. When closed, it sits flush with the wall. Your best guess is that the room you're in was built in one piece, and that the door was later cut from it. Uh, well, wait. You calm yourself and settle back to wait for the door open. An interminable amount of time later, you hear the sound of muffled voices, followed by a dull thunk. The scrape of metal dragged over metal fills your ears. God, I hate that sound. Yeah, thanks. That one. <laughs> Talk about timing, though. Uh, the door pops open, but only a crack. A sliver of daylight streams through from the other side. Uh, hi. What's going on? Oh. Where'd you come from? Where did you two come from? What? The sun stabs your eyes as you step from the interrogation room into the noonday sun. Blinking against the glare, the world gradually swims into focus. A familiar face greets you. Huh, <laughs> Kira, you're out. Thank God. They had you locked in there, away in there since we got here. Uh, true story. We only knew when you were where you were because we could hear you screaming last night. She steps towards you, an expression of concern on her face. You okay, Seattle? Didn't hurt you too bad, did they? Uh... They had a mage. Magical interrogation. <laughs> Bastard's pulling out the big guns. He shakes his head agitatedly. In agitation, I would say would be like more... Okay. Thing is, they should have been interrogating us at the same time. Comparing our accounts and memories of the evening it doesn't even make sense. To, doesn't make sense for them to question you for hours while we're all sitting out here. None of this makes sense. Our captors wear the uniforms of police constables, but this isn't central booking. It sounds and smells like an impound lot, and gassing you like they did is anything but standard procedure. <laughs> yeah, we're. You weren't. Like, the gang's all here. Sadly, yes. We all share the same predicament, regardless of our participation in Kindly Cheng's errand. It is a long story. You know what else doesn't make sense? Cops coming after us at all. I mean, the APB on us was lifted, right? That's what Auntie Cheng said after we got out of the walled city. It was lifted. The APB that Josephine Sang had crate put out on us came with a killer capture order attached to it, and they weren't paying much attention to the capture part. If the APB hadn't been lifted, we wouldn't be having this conversation. We'd all be dead, just like Nightjar and Carter. Duncan's back stiffens, but he holds his tongue. We should be dead now, or in a secure facility somewhere. Instead, we're just sitting in an impound lot. And not just us, either, she gestures into the distance. At the edge of the impound yard, tethered to the docks, the rusting hulk of the Defiance rises above its surroundings. Oh, are we actually going to, like... Okay. Have... How'd you bring the boat here? Oh. Heavy chains snake up from secure moorings on the dock, docks to heavy maglocks that clamp down on the vessel's hull. She isn't going anywhere. They didn't just arrest us. They arrested our damn boat. And those of us on board were taken along for the ride. <sighs> no warning was given. They simply hooked us to a tug, cut away our moorings, and hauled us away from the harbor. Can you shed any more light on this at all, Seattle? I mean, did whoever you talked to in there let anything else slip or anything? Uh, Lamb or Q? I know lots of people named Lamb and Q. They aren't uncommon. Considering where we are, I'd guess they're high-ranking cops. Beyond that, though, your guess is as good as mine. Gaichu suddenly leans toward the 
Cell door is head cocked. An eyebrow raises. He lifts a gnarled hand, gesturing for the team to halt. Do you hear that? Footsteps. Someone is coming. He lowers himself into a ready stance. Prepare yourselves. We are about to have company. I mean... Hello. A uniformed constable wearing a sergeant's insignia passes through a set of double gates and into your holding pen. She walks with an air of quiet authority, her face an expressionless mask. A pair of wary eyes fix themselves on you. Kira. Step forward, please. Um, okay. She nods, raises her PDA, and begins to type in a series of commands. Thank you for your cooperation. Senior Inspectors Lamb and Q want a word with you. Uh... I think I'd like a word with them, too. She nods, raises her PDA, and begins to type in a series of commands. Oh, great. Again. That's the right attitude. Very good. In a moment, I'm going to let you out of this cage. When I do that, I want you to make your way to the command trailer near the edge of the docks. Don't try anything stupid. You're being watched. Uh, I know the drill. Better get walking, then. She punches a final button on her PDA, and the massive gates to the pen that holds you begin to rumble open. Go on, move. You don't want to leave the inspe senior inspectors waiting. Great. Sure, let's go. Where are we going? Oh, just right over here? Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Hi. What's up, guys? The cramped confines of the command trailer are packed to the gills with security-rated technology. Terminals and surveillance packages, all stamped with the Mitsuhama logo, fill every inch of available space. Just ahead of you, a pair of senior inspectors. One male, one female. They look very similar. Uh, I mean, they're outfit-wise, I should say. Although they do have both, both have black hair and very pale skin. Um, stand over command console. The man offers you a friendly smile. Ah, Ms. Moore, you're here. Very good. I'm Senior Inspector Andy Lamb, one of the leaders of this task force. Thank you for coming so promptly. He extends a hand for you to shake. Uh... You say that as if I had a choice. The woman, an elf, replies through a mouth that seems drawn into a permanent scowl. Seems like you've got a firm grasp on the situation. It's good. It'll save us some time. I got a real bastard of migraines, so let's try to make this quick. Yes, of course. He offers her a slight bow. My apologies, my apologies, Senior Inspector Q. As for you, Kira, you must be wondering what you and your team are doing here. Uh, I get the feeling you're going to tell me. Q cuts in, rubbing the bridge of her nose between her thumb and forefinger. Long story short, we got a problem and you're in a unique position to help us solve it. This is a job offer, Kira. We want to hire you. Um, can't say I think much of your recruitment tactics. I'm sure you don't, but you can't deny their effectiveness. Go ahead and pull up the file, Lamb. He nods, and his fingers dance over his PDA's key keypad. He raises the device to show you what he's pulled up on the display. From the device's tiny screen, a familiar face leers back at you. Lamb holds it into your face, <laughs> holds it to your face, for a few seconds, then pulls the device away. You have history with this woman. He phrases it as a statement. Um. Yeah. Yeah, we know her. Uh, yeah. That's right. That ambush did kill some friend of yours. Some friends of yours. A Lone Star officer named Carter and a shadow runner who called himself Nightjar, if I'm not mistaken. There was another one there. Like, there was a third person who died that apparently everybody's just forgotten. I mean, they, they said that nobody cared about him, but... Like, wow, I didn't realize that they were so literal. Um, yeah, her people gunned them down in the middle of a friendly chat. Crates people are nothing if not efficient, and the chief inspector herself is a highly decorated officer, a leader of the HKPF's elite special duties unit. Within the police force, she's universally respected and feared. Uh, respected? I feel like that should have big quote marks around it, but... She's also the unofficial face of the spe special duties unit in the Hong Kong media circuit. When they need a talking head for a news broadcast, she's the woman they go to. To her fellow inspectors, creates a hero and a role model. They go to bat for her without a second's hesitation. The woman has a lot of pull. Uh, hence your need for an outsider. 
That's right. Key members of the Executive Council believe that Kraid is at the center of a criminal conspiracy within the HKPF. She and her co-conspirators have been working as mercenaries under our noses, taking on illicit side work for profit and tarnishing the HKPF's good name in the process. This task force was assembled to investigate that suspicion. Um. Gee, what was the first clue? Her association with Josephine Sang, funny enough. Including the APB that Sang and Crate put out on you. You may be aware that, when, that your name was cleared, by the way. The APB was lifted and your file scrubbed clean. Lamb and I were the ones who made that happen. Uh, I guess a thank you is in order? <laughs> that won't be necessary. That APB should never have been called out in the first place. Rescinding it was the right thing to do. Now... We understand that the prospect of working with the police task force could feel foreign to you, and I fully expect you have questions you'd like to ask. He spreads his hands. If there's anything pressing you'd like to know, I'll do my best to answer. Um. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Why me? I mean, simple answer to that is that we're the protagonist, but uh, <laughs> others. Other runners don't have a built-in reason to want Kraid dead. You do. Beyond that, you're the perfect deniable asset for the job. If you get caught or killed, the SDU will assume you were there to get revenge for what they did to you. Uh. Okay. You really are the perfect runner for this job. What we pulled from... Ugh. Pardon me. What we pulled from your mind in interrogation confirmed it. We know we can trust you for this job, and that's invaluable to people in our position. Uh, what is your role, anyway? I handle the technical side of the investigation. Decking and information monitoring, control, surveillance work, that sort of thing. Q is on loan from Mitsuhama Corporate. She's a cop just like I am, but her prim primary responsibility is safeguarding the company's image and financial interests. What does a, uh... Japanicorp care about some dirty cops in Hong Kong? The Hong Kong police force is owned and operated by Mitsuhama. Company's obviously concerned by what's happening here, so they dispatched me to help Lamb lead this investigation. Consider me a corporate liaison here to bridge the gap between the suits. It starts. And the uniforms. Uh, sounds thrilling. Pays better than walking a beat. Uh, where'd you take me? We're nearer to Aberdeen than we are to Hyoi. That's about all you need to know. Secrecy is one of our most important tools for survival, Kira. We can't give you an exact address. Okay. Uh, how did you get my boat here? What makes you think she could stop us? The Lotus is powerful, but we have a navy at our disposal. What did you do, attack Yoi? Of course not! We made a token show of force, and that was that. Kindly Chang doesn't want the Marine Police parking a Sea Panther off the Yoi docks any more than anybody would. As highly as she might think of you, she wasn't about to risk a shooting war to keep us from towing your houseboat. Um, cool. And what's next is that we let you go, for now. Take some time, think it over, come back when you're ready to seal the deal. After you've, accept after you've accepted, we go into the details of the run. Uh. Uh. I... F <sighs> I don't know. All right. Well, I don't. I don't think that most of my team would really object. But uh, running it by my team first. That's why we're letting you go. Talk to them. Tell them exactly what we told you. We're confident that they'll want to work with us. They should be heading to the fines as we speak. She pauses. Fun name, by the way. It's a. It's a. It's a Star Trek reference. Do you like Star Trek? We like Star Trek. I mean, it's. It's the closest I could get to a Star Trek reference within the confines of the game, at least. <laughs> when you made your decision, come back to us. No rush, no presser, no pressure. We're not trying to coerce you into doing this. We're all on the same team, after all. Uh, great. I'm sure. We're totally all on the same team. Um. All right. Well, we're gonna call it. Okay. They all they they all got let free. Cool. Um. Yeah, we're gonna call it here. And then next time, we're going to have some chats.
Ooh, look at that water. That's, that's some nice water effects right there. I like that. Um, so yeah, this should be cool. This should be fun. This should be awesome. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!